Howdy folks, I was in the mood for making a video about the Sega Genesis and how it competed with the Nintendo Entertainment System for its first two years of existence in the United States. So, as you can see, I'm just using a simple <laughs> uh, paint uh, program here to get my first uh, shot. I uh, quickly put this together. I've done a lot of um, research though on the Sega Genesis through years. The thing is, it's always fascinated me, the system, since, uh, well, first of all, I didn't have one, although I did have a couple of friends. But second of all, uh, the Nintendo was huge in the United States, just like as it was in Japan. And I found it fascinating how the Sega Genesis tried to break into the U.S. Uh, market using all kinds of tactics despite not having as good games. Yes, as you uh, probably know, uh, the Genesis uh, made by Sega uh, appeared two years uh, before the Super Nintendo, and by doing so, they had, uh, they had a little window of opportunity to take over the U.S. market. Uh, the Genesis was called the Mega Drive in Japan, but didn't do that well there. And I think they saw it coming, Sega, because you had the uh, PC engine, also known as the TurboGrafx-16. And uh, in all fairness, the systems weren't that many diff uh, weren't that different. The uh, but the TurboGrafx-16 uh, uh, was more popular in Japan, so Sega tried to get the American market. Uh, the European market and the Brazilian market was a bit different because the master system was already a, uh, a success there. But the USA uh, was still up for grabs. And how they did that, well, they had a, a marketing campaign which had uh, basically three uh, uh, essential ingredients. First of all, they wanted to say yeah, that you could get the arcade experience at home. So they had games like Golden Axe and uh, uh, Goals and Ghosts. And uh, you could uh, take a capital say, get the arcade experience at home. Which, um, personally, I don't think was very convincing. Uh, you also had the TurboGrafx-16, also appearing in late 89, kind of saying the same thing. Uh, you also had, uh, uh, remember also the Game Boy came out in late 89? And the Atari Lynx, so there was a lot of options at the time. And what's interesting about the late 80s was uh, the arcades are kind of in decline at the moment. I mean, they would get revitalized by Street Fighter 2 in 1991. But uh, to me and my friends, having the arcade experience wasn't really that what we were uh, looking for that much at the time. You see, we were getting used to games being longer and more adventurous. We loved our Marios and Zeldas and our Mega Man 2s and Ninja Gaidens. And these were games we, um, mm, it took a while to beat them, and we liked that. <laughs> and uh, of course, we all loved uh, good graphics, which is something I'll get on to, uh, to later. But um, yeah, Sega was trying to sell us uh, games that you know, seemed to be uh, kind of finished quite early. And if you look at the uh, arcade experience of the late 80s, it was all about the beat-em-ups by then. You had Double Dragon, uh, you had, uh, in 1989, the biggest two titles were uh, Final Fight and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game. And what I, th uh, my theory is that beat-em-ups became popular in the arcade because people wanted to have longer experiences than, you know, like, let's say, Pac-Man and Donkey Kong or uh, shoot 'em up uh, But they still wanted to have accessibility, and the beat-em-up was good at that. But focusing on beat em ups and shoot em ups like the Genesis did, uh, and I would argue the TurboGrafx 16 also did that, uh, wasn't really the best marketing because, like I said, uh, we kids, we wanted adventures. We wanted big, uh, big games that, uh, that could interest us in the long run. So the first tactic, trying to sell the arcade experience, I don't think it was very successful, but also, uh, was the case was that TurboGrafx-16 was also selling the same thing. And honestly, even though the, uh, the Genesis had slightly better graphics, as kids, we couldn't really tell much of a difference. So the uh, the second uh, part of the uh, the marketing was always the graphics. Oh, the, the Genesis was the graphics machine. And yes, it's true. They definitely had the best at the time. Big sprites, lots of colors. We liked that. We found it attractive. But... Um, 
Uh, yeah, we, as kids, we also knew there was more to a game than just that. And like I said, the TurboGrafx-16 and the comparable graphics, we, be, you know, it had apparently had 16-bit graphics. I mean, that was in the name. So we didn't think the Genesis was much stronger. Um, we didn't notice a difference, at least. And the third thing was, and I think this, that, um, the, the Genesis did this better on TurboGrafx-16, was uh, they marketed the Genesis more towards... Uh, some more adult um, uh, share of the market, but didn't it more adolescently, kind of like uh, saying, "Yeah, Nintendo's boring. It's time for something new." And uh, and it's in time that has increased. They get more and more aggressive, basically making f uh, making fun of Nintendo players. But the first two years, it was mostly about you know, a Genesis does what Nintendo don't, trying to say, "Well, you know, uh, uh, this is something you don't have. So this is what you want." And it was a bit aggressive, uh, but uh, it was cool at the same time. Genesis uh, definitely focused on brands. Uh, no, I'm saying it wrong. Not brands, but like celebrities, like Tommy the Sorda, uh, Pat Riley. These uh, these were you know kind of people we associated with uh, uh, with adult culture. Thinking like, okay, these are the. Um, it's not just about the games. It's about you know the people we see on TV. So we like that. Uh, nevertheless, even though these three marketing ingredients, not bad, uh, the Genesis didn't start to sell well until the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, appeared on the system, which was also sold with the Genesis. This was, uh, summer 1991. So the first two years, the Genesis didn't do that really well. And we're going to look really in depth why that was the case. Uh, we're going to compare it to Nintendo at the time and other systems. What, what it was kind of like to see the Genesis come on the marketplace and uh, what that what that meant to us as kids. Um, so as you can see on the screen, I have a list of games that were released for the Genesis. And we're going to quickly go through all of them. I also made a list of Nintendo games uh, as shorthand. Uh, it's all started with me thinking, well, you know, if, if I had to choose between the two systems in those two years, which one would be the better choice? And this is the kind of thing uh, my friends and I were always discussing about. Like, oh, should we get, uh, we all had a Nintendo, of course, but should we get the Genesis or the TurboGrafx-16? Well, it wasn't really clear at the time. We didn't feel like there were many good games for either system. So we were quite content with our Nintendos. Uh, we had friends with the other systems. We dropped by and played games. And they were cool, but I don't remember falling in love with any of them. Um, we'll get back to that a little bit more later. Now, the Super Nintendo was more exciting, mostly because it had sequels to the, the fantastic games we already had played on the uh, Nintendo. But that's for something later. We're going to focus now on 1989. And the release of the Genesis... Uh, let's get, at, for example, Tommy the Sword of Baseball... Um, yeah, but also Goals and Ghosts. There were more games, but these were the two games that stuck out the most. Uh, now, I have a bunch of pictures to share with you. Let's see if I can quickly get it. Yeah. Oh, there was, of course, Elder Beast. I have to talk about that. So, uh, oh, here's a, <laughs> we have a Wikipedia list of all the games releasing. I don't think we'll be using that. But Elder Beast was the package game. And it looked really scary. You didn't have anything on the Nintendo quite like this. I mean, especially the sounds are really nasty and gruntled. And that made an impression on us, but it wasn't a very interesting game. Uh, we all gave it a shot at our friend's place, but I don't know, it just wasn't that exciting, to be honest. So, uh, cool graphics, but little more than that. Uh, you also had Space Harrier, too, but we didn't like it that much either. I mean, the arcade version of Space Harrier was much more in your face, uh, which is the case with a lot of these quasi-3D games. You know, uh, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember the name of the technology. It started with OutRun. A lot of Sega tight arcade titles had this uh, had these sprites coming on uh, at you at a fast pace. You know, the Afterburner and uh, Space Air. And really, the Genesis version didn't look that awesome. I mean, it looked better than the TurboGrafx-16 version, but I've never seen that in real life, only on the Internet. So another example, is, of course, is... Uh, Thunderblade also looked fantastic in the arcade. I mean, much better than, I don't know, like, say, uh, Star Fox. But the Genesis version, everything looks so flat. I mean, in the arcade version, these buildings look much more 3D. And, uh, yeah, it was really a muted-down version of uh, what we're used to seeing in the arcade. So that didn't impress us either. Uh, Thunder Force 2 is also a release title. I don't remember playing this as a kid, uh, but it's, it's an okay shoot 'em up but it would be part three and part four that really rocked the Genesis. But part two, I don't know. So this game was interesting because I think at the time it 
uh, was one of the better baseball games, especially when it comes to realism. Tell me the sort of baseball. Uh, people liked it. Uh, but I have to say that around the same time, the Nintendo also had a lot of good baseball games. Of course, you had RBI Baseball, which was also kind of arcadey like this game. Didn't look as good, but played just as well. Uh, you had Bases Loaded, which looked almost as good as this game for the Nintendo. But I think everybody's favorite in the long run was uh, oh, Baseball Stars. That was the base game where you could trade players, and that was so cool. And Lasorda didn't have that, so if you ask me, most... Nintendo players preferred uh, what they had on their Nintendo, namely, uh, I forgot the name, Baseball Stars, which was an SNK game, SNK game. So, good game, but not the best at the time. Now, Goals and Ghosts was probably the best game uh, released for the Genesis at the start. Uh, yeah, just like the arcade game, that was really cool. Looked fantastic. Hard as nails, we all knew that, but, you know, it wasn't that much harder than, I don't know, Castlevania. So, uh, yeah, we all knew uh, uh, Ghosts and Goblins from Nintendo, which wasn't really the most popular game on the NES. And I think that at the time, a lot of us were like, yeah, do we want to play more of that on the Genesis? Nah, you know, just running around in your underpants. Uh, probably the best game on the Genesis re release, but still not fair, not really the kind of thing we were hoping to play. So later in the year 1989, we had... Uh, Forgotten Worlds, which is a shooting game by uh, Capcom, and you could shoot in eight directions, which was pretty cool while you know, hovering around. We kind of knew it from the arcades, we didn't see it everywhere, and it really isn't the most in interesting game, but I think it's worth mentioning because it showed yet again that the Genesis could get the arcade experience at home for those who cared about that. Uh, Super Hang On was also released, uh, um, another arcade like game, but not that pop. I mean, in the arcade, you could sit on the motorcycle. That was way cooler. So, late 89 also had Thruk uh, Truxton. Um, uh, decent uh, shoot em up. Mostly famous now for the uh, the song uh, by uh, what was it called? Classic Video Game. Uh, oh, Jesus, what's the name of the channel? Uh, well, look up Truxton's song. Uh, it's hilarious. But it's, uh, it's, it's a good shooting game, but not a reason to buy a system, if you ask me. Revenge of the Shinobi, released the eight of late of eighty nine, was a good reason to buy the system because this was not the uh, this was the sequel to Shinobi, but it was a different game than Shadow Dancer, which we knew from the uh, arcades, and uh, it was really cool. We loved it. It's mostly known nowadays for having bought having Spider Man and Godzilla and Batman as bosses. Uh, yeah, so that was funny. Even though as kids we didn't think that was that weird, <laughs> but yeah, uh, good game. Although I always preferred Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, we'll soon get back to uh, the Nintendo once I get around the uh, first round of Genesis games. Golden Axe is the other system seller. Um, yeah, just like the arcade, uh, not the best beat em up at the time. Like I said, Final Fight and Turtles was much more popular. But still, it was pretty cool to be able to play this at a friend's house with the two of us and beat, beat everything up. Uh, we liked it, yeah. Now, this is 1990, so we're going to put this away. And... I'm going to tell you what it was like to compare the Genesis to what else was around there. So let's first talk about the TurboGrafx-16, though, because that was also in the market. And I think the Genesis was slightly more popular because the Genesis had this uh, American attitude. Now, the, the TurboGrafx-16 was obviously still very Japanese and a bit kind of weird. They also had more emphasis on role-playing games and uh, shoot 'em ups which really weren't that popular in the United States. Um, Genesis had better beat em ups and more, more physical uh, kinds of games. So I would say that the TurboGrafx system, we, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit strange when it came to its games, and none of them really stuck out. None of them had the brand recognition of Golden Axe or Shinobi, except R Type. R Type we did know um, from the arcades. That was cool. And all the others, I uh, the, the graphics system seemed to be kind of the same thing. But weirder games, we prefer the Genesis just a little bit more. But again, neither of these systems sold really well. As a kid, we were more excited about the Game Boy because that had Super Mario Land. We all wanted to play Mario games. And there was Tetris, of course, and all other kind of like cute games like Tennis and New Castlevania. Uh, so yeah, the Game Boy was actually more interesting to us than the Genesis because we had faith in the games, <laughs> even though in retrospect... Uh, they weren't as good as the games on the Genesis, but we knew them. And that felt, uh, you know, we were all reading Nintendo Power and getting excited about the Game Boy. 
There wasn't really a, a Sega equivalent to Nintendo Power, so there was a lot of hype around that. And finally, there was the Lynx, which looked better than the Game Boy, but uh, we could tell that it was only not only much more expensive, so you were going to ask your parents uh, for one, but also there weren't any games that interested us, so that was the Lynx. But there was a lot going on in 1989, not to mention what was on the Nintendo. So when Christmas 1989 came around, you could ask for a Genesis, but in all fairness, you were more likely to ask for what was on Nintendo, because 1989 was yet another fantastic year for the Nintendo. Um, I put them in order, so apparently Tecmo Bowl was released early in the year. Uh, to me, it's always been around, Tecmo Bowl. It's just such a huge game. I mean, later, 1991, it was replaced by Tecmo Super Bowl, but uh, everybody was playing this game. Uh, this was the game to play with the two of us, so before there was Street Fighter, there was Tecmo Bowl. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember asking for myself because it seemed like everybody had an older brother who had that game lying around. Also, 93, 89, sorry, you had uh, Ninja Gaiden. Oh, in case you're wondering about these numbers next to the games, those are the average scores by video game magazines according to Moby Games, a fantastic website. Uh, this thing games. We'll go back to the Genesis games later. Look at that. But you can see Mega Man 2 out of 91, which is the highest you'll find here. Um... Uh, but yeah, Ninja Gaiden, everybody had this game. Uh, it, trust me, everybody says it's really hard, but to be honest, the first two-thirds of the game are actually quite doable, so most of us got to see most of the game. <laughs> it's just the last uh, level that's really stupid. But uh, we loved that game, and I preferred it to Shinobi, to be honest, uh, Arcade uh, or the Revenge of. Um, Adventure of Low was a cute puzzle game. You had uh, Guardian Levels, like this hybrid of shooting and adventure. Uh, these games weren't that popular, though we did know them. But Mega Man 2 was all over the place. One of the best games ever made. Uh, yeah, you, you probably know it, but it's it, uh, thinking back, it's one. Of, it's really the first game not made Nintendo that everybody loved. And that sounds weird, but um, back then, the big games were Mario, they were Zelda, they were Punch-Out! Uh, I don't know, it, it was all Nintendo properties. And then one day, you had Mega Man 2, which was not made, made by Nintendo, and it was so fascinating to see this game that was totally different, unlike anything else. Nobody played Mega Man 1, just to be clear. It was just 2 came out of nowhere. And uh, it was so good, you could still enjoy it completely. Now, track of the field 2, you know, sports games. Like I said, Baseball Stars, one of the best baseball games ever made. Um, Guerrilla Wars is shoot 'em up from top down. Now, Strider's an interesting thing, because uh, later we got the Genesis version of Strider, which was like the arcade. But for Nintendo... I don't know why it only got a 73, according to the magazine, because we love Strider. It's a much more of an adventure game with great controls, great graphics. Um, kind of like Mega Man 2. Not as popular as Mega Man 2, but a fantastic adventure game for Nintendo. I definitely advise you to try it out. So, ready. Three games in 89 that, to us, were all must-plays. Now, Dragon Warrior is an interesting case, because we all got it for free, thanks to Nintendo Power. And it has a low score, which I understand because it was one of the first Japanese RPGs, and nowadays it's not considered that good. But we liked playing it. Not all of us really got into it, but some of us did. And those who really got into it, they loved it. And they would talk about it all the time. And I was one of those kids, too. So, oh, we loved our RPGs. And this is one of those games that had a duration that we didn't see in the Genesis. Now, Faxanadu, another action RPG, kind of like Zelda 2. Uh, not as popular, but still pretty cool. And then there was DuckTales, an extremely popular game. Pretty short, everybody beat it like in a day or two. But it was so much fun, you know, pogoing around. So, uh, and then there was Tetris. Now, everybody talks about the Game Boy version, but a lot of us also had the, uh, the Nintendo version lying around at home, uh, which was more fun to play because of the graphics and big screen. And, um, yeah, uh, that was another reason to, to just stick around with the Nintendo. And finally, Battle of Olympus. Uh, I feel like this game wasn't popular in 89, but a bit later. But still, kind of like Zelda 2. Actually, a lot like Zelda 2. Another great adventure game. So, uh, 89 by itself had plenty of great games. I mean, there were many, many more games in 89. Also, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which everybody wanted, even though it wasn't a good game. So, for Christmas, you might not have asked for the Genesis. You would have a whole list of Nintendo games you wanted. So that's what Genesis was competing against. Now let's go back to uh, Genesis in 1990. Now I see I'm already at 20 minutes. <laughs> so I have lots to talk about. I wonder how long this is going to be. But if we go back to the uh, Genesis, 
Uh, I don't remember when this was released. I think around March or something. This is a British game, Quapolis. Kind of like SimCity. Uh, very popular in Europe. And you can play it on your Genesis. For those who were in the know, would have loved this game. This is one of those longer games that we Nintendo players were uh, into. And you, you play the god and you get people to fight with each other. Then there was Shadow Dancer. Turned out to be different from the arcade game, but close enough. Uh, more Shinobi action. Really good. Um, yeah, we liked it. So, and then there was Fantasy Star 2. Now, to be honest, nobody nobody I knew as a kid knew this game. Uh, we were still getting into uh, Dr uh, Dragon Warrior. Uh, we didn't know there were even more games like that until uh, <laughs> Nintendo P Power started talking about Final Fantasy all the time. But we didn't know that Genesis had a role-playing game. And if we did, that would have been interesting. But they didn't market enough, I guess. So, uh, it's very standard stuff. But at the time, that was good enough. Now, Afterburner 2 was released for the Genesis. Looked really good. Probably the best uh, 3D game uh, for the uh, Genesis. Uh, but still, I don't know if people got that excited about it. Columns, uh, released, I think, in the summer of 1990, was their Sega's answer to Tetris. Yeah, it was okay. But we prefer Tetris. Uh, I mean, all these colors and stuff just wasn't as much fun as just making complete blocks. Now... And Moonwalker was an interesting case because everybody was talking about this. Yes, it had fantastic sound. Yes, it had Michael Jackson. And you can do all these funky dance moves. But it wasn't really that much of a good game to play. I mean, walking over the place and opening doors to find kids. And um, I found it disappointing. I don't remember actually ever getting past the first level as a kid at a friend's house. But it was good marketing, you know, Michael Jackson uh, with Sega. Also released, uh, I think... Around September, I mean, I have this list here. I can look it up. Ooh, <clears throat> Super Monaco GP. Uh, yeah, September apparently. See, this is a uh, uh, ninety, and the ninth is September. This was not as good looking as the arcade game. Actually, uh, the arcade game was very three D and in your face. It was in uh, Monaco, so you had all these buildings. The Genesis version. Uh, it was much flatter. The buildings were in the distance, but you could go to other places, and that's the cool thing. This was a more of an adventure game. After every race, you could buy, uh, you could change teams, you can buy upgrades, and that made it a lot more fun than the arcade game. So this is really a good racing game for the Genesis. And if uh, you're, you think it's just a weaker version of the arcade game, no, you're wrong. Try it out as an uh, like an adventure or uh, as a uh, racing RPG. Now, Thunder Force Three. This apparently was awesome. I've never played this as a kid, but uh, Internet Culture loves this game. It's a very accessible uh, shoot 'em up with fantastic graphics and sound and interesting weapons. It has everything a shoot 'em up should do. Um, yeah, probably one of the best, maybe even the best uh, from the 16 bit uh, uh, type. So, uh, this is a good game for the Genesis, even though I don't think it sold very well. <laughs> Now, during, uh, towards the end of 1990, we had John Madden Football. Now, Nintendo had Tecmo Bowl, and was John Madden Football better? I don't think so, but it was more realistic. I mean, it had like a like a 3D uh, perspective to it. That was pretty cool. Uh, it didn't have the teams and the players, but as kids, we didn't really mind. And, well, it had all the playbooks, but whatever, right? I mean, Tecmo Bowl also had a couple of playbooks, so that was good enough. Um, did a... We still... Kept playing Tecmo Bowl after this because that was the game that the older brothers uh, had around and wanted to play. Uh, but we, we acknowledged that John Manifold was cool. There was also the uh, Joe Montana Montana one, which was more from the side. That that was kind of like Tecmo Bowl, but not as quick and not as fun. So, uh, but Madden looked better and it sold very well. Now near the end of 1990, there was Strider, while the Nintendo version was a complete adventure. This was uh, it was very hard, so nobody actually beat it, but it's a very short game, actually, and you're jumping all over the place with this huge sword. Looks really cool. Um, very popular for what it does, and, uh, there was nothing like it on the Nintendo, even though there was a namesake that was the same. So that was a really impressive game, uh, to show off if you had it on the Genesis. Granada is a shoot 'em up which you can go multiple directions. Never saw it as a kid, but, uh... According to the internet, it's a classic. And then we have, again, a, kind of the opposite. Castle of Illusion was very popular among my friends. Just a nice, friendly <laughs> Mickey Mouse platformer, which you all enjoyed. Not as good as Nintendo. No, no, no. But 
we uh, we we liked playing it. It was uh, really nice. Great music too, and it sold very well, of course. Because uh... oh, and there's Musha, the other fantastic shoot 'em up for the Genesis release that year. Uh, very accessible, great music. Uh, yeah, just give it a try. It's 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 just amazingly cool. So that was also. Uh, that's also a game famous on the internet. I didn't never saw it as a kid. Now let's go back to the Nintendo and see what they had. Now where did I leave that list? Uh, yeah, here we go. The thing with 1990 was you had Super Mario Brothers three. That game was easily the biggest game of all time back then. And if you hadn't, if you didn't get it in the summer, I. I was lucky to get it in the summer. I uh, <laughs> I uh, I remember getting a. I think I, think I, I had a really good baseball game. My parents they uh, they uh, rewarded me by giving me the game because uh, I wanted to play it so badly. Everybody wants to play it badly. I mean, it was it was in the Wizard movie, right? So easily the best game of all time upon its release. And early 1990 was totally dominated by this game. The Genesis didn't have that many good. Games in the early 90s, just so there was like Populous and what else. It wasn't until the summer that they had better games. So, early 90, all about the Nintendo. There was also Double Dragon 2, a fantastic beat em up. Uh, River City Ransom, which some consider to be better, but not that many people played that. Uh, but it's a it's a role playing game beat em up uh, mix. Now, King of the Beach gets a 90 here. I uh, thought it was kind of average, but it's a volleyball game, apparently. It's very good. A lot of people had Batman. Uh, which is a very good uh, jump uh, platform uh, game. Uh, it's not very Batman-ish. I think uh, I think they just took like some kind of um, uh, cyberpunk and a Nintendo game and just added Batman as a sprite or something because it looks more like a Contra game than something you expect from Batman. Now speaking of Contra, it's Super Contra, the sequel. Didn't play it as much as the original back then, but uh, it's definitely uh, just as good. Final Fantasy, I love this game. If you're into Dragon War, you got this game. And Nintendo Power talked about it all the time. And it's definitely a better game. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, for me, that was big. Ninja Gaiden 2 was released. More Ninja Gaiden. What can go, uh, nothing wrong. Uh, Bad News Baseball was also released. Another nice baseball game. Crystalis is kind of like Zelda, but a bit faster. Um, I liked it a lot. even But none of my friends played it. Solstice, kind of popular in England. And then towards the end of the year, we had Castlevania 3, which looks fantastic. I mean, I remember talking to my friends, asking, like, yeah, do you think Castlevania 3 looks better than Genesis games? So, uh, some of us actually thought that. Uh, that's how beautiful it was. Dragon Warrior 2 was released, um, but we preferred Final Fantasy by then. Kiki Beckel is another puzzle game. Little Nemo was a pretty cool-looking platforming game. Now, I love Maniac Mansion, from my, uh, and it's a classic, of course. So uh, that was really cool. Uh, was Shadowgate released by then? Yeah, Shadowgate had also been released. A lot of people played that, but not that many people really liked it because you kept dying because your torch is running out or stupid reasons. Maniac Mansion is a much better game, but wasn't that popular among kids for some reason. I don't know. Mega Man 3 finally was released uh, for Christmas, and a lot of our friends got that because this was the sequel to Mega Man 2, who we all loved. And then uh, the other big Christmas game was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Finally, after playing it for months in the arcade, we could play it at home. It had a couple of extra levels. But this was the kind of arcade game we did want to play at home because it was really long. And it was, it was the Turtles. We all loved them. We couldn't get enough of them. Uh, there was also Star Tropics. Uh, none of my friends had it. But in retrospect, it's a bit of a classic. It's a lot like Zelda. So, kind of a bit unappreciated. I mean, Nintendo Power gave it a lot of attention. But it uh, wasn't that popular back then. So, here you have... Night oh, yeah, Dr. Mario 2. I love this game. And uh, more popular than Columns, if you ask me. You could add a two-player mode, so that was really cool. So, 1990 was another stellar year for the Nintendo. And that's what the Genesis had to fight against. Uh, in that short window of time they had against Nintendo... It's gone to 1991. Jesus, we uh, <laughs> this is going to be a long video. There's a lot to tell. All right. Let's take a look at what the Genesis... Oh, yeah, I have them here on the uh, Microsoft Edge program because I was running out of uh, room. Now, Giaris, released in early 1991. Another uh, very good shoot-em-up. I'll leave it at that. 
What's this? Oh, yeah, Wings of War, another very good tune-off for the Genesis. Yeah, they had plenty. PGA Tour uh, was surprisingly popular among adults. Uh, there was a small group of Genesis players who were adults by then, who were into the sports games and the simulations. The PGA Tour was a very, very good uh, golfing game. So if you didn't have a PC for a similar uh, game, this, I think this was released for PC, you could play on a Genesis. I remember reading about that in some magazines. Uh, oh yeah, Starflight. So this is an older PC game where you travel uh, around the universe with all kinds of different civilizations way before its time. And I think this game was released in 1990, 1986 or something. But a couple of Genesis peop, uh, owners were really happy to be able to play this game. I think it's worth looking into, into if you're into like Elite and uh, other uh, space uh, science fiction games. Enter summer 1991. That's when Sonic the Hedgehog was released. And this changed everything. Now all of a sudden the Genesis had a game which was on par with what Nintendo was releasing. Uh, this game was very colorful, great sound, the speed, everything. We just loved Sonic. Uh, you could play it in all the toy stores. Uh, um, you got it with the Genesis if you bought it that summer. So a lot of people started buying Genesis in, uh, in the summer of 1991. And it sold better than the Super Nintendo, all thanks to this guy. But it's a good game. Yeah. I don't think I have to say much more about it. So late 1991 was very good for the Genesis. Now they came... In full style. I mean, late 1990 had a lot of good titles, but better than than the Nintendo? I don't think so. Kind of the same, kind of average. But okay, here we have the Immortal, a kind of an RPG, which is really.